concept or fear of the last judgment. And yet they can talk about justice and peace. They're able to talk about injustices and what someone has done wrong to them or to another country. But without there being any judgment at the end of this world, what difference does it matter if a person does what we call right or wrong, if there is no judgment. Well, the way that when we look in the scriptures, people talk now, it's as if there is no judgment at all. When people talk about the words and the ways of the Most High God and his son, the Messiah, We've been taught here because Jesus died and that Jesus rose from the dead. There is no more covenant that we are under that will give laws and give righteous standards. We're taught now that we're under a new covenant that is administered by grace. Let's just go to the let's just go to the scriptures and let's look and see what the issue is. I would submit to you that I believe that the problem is most of the time it's the way that people look at what the apostle Paul said. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the scriptures. I thought I had shared my screen, but I say just in case I didn't, I didn't. I caught myself one time. Oh, you did good. So let's look at what our subject will be. I have on here for my topic today, I will prove that one that mocks and replaces Torah. I spelled it three ways, I spelled it two ways. Torah, T-O-R-A, or T-O-R-A-H. And I think when I saved it somewhere else, I spelled it Torah again. I say one that mocks and replaces Torah will never be saved. That's a strong statement. Because people mock Torah. They mock the righteous law of God and they'll say that they're glad that they're not under the law. The first law, all it did was it condemn. It never gave any power to live right. Quite an amazing statement when Elizabeth and Zechariah were blameless before God. Quite an amazing story to look at when we see that Moses came back and was on the Mount of Transfiguration with the Messiah. It's quite an amazing story when the Holy Spirit talked to Simeon. It's quite an amazing story that there were people in Hebrews chapter 12 that when it talks about we have come to the heavenly Mount Zion to the spirit of just men made perfect. Now there is a qualifier there and the qualifier is is that the people that had already been made righteous, the people that had already experienced God's spirit, they had their redemption fully paid for. And we went through that on Thursday night, but I had to stop. So again, I said, I will prove. That doesn't mean it will be accepted. There's a thing called proof theory. And there's another thing when a person accepts what has been provided. I will begin to show that Easter or Resurrection Day, as people call it, it does not banish the law of Yah. And those that teach that it does, they twist the Holy Scriptures in ignorance. So I'm going to try to be direct, but at the same time, not soft and overly what somebody said. 
I can't receive, you know, because people are very soft. They're soft when it comes to seeing the things of God, but when they talk about their rights, when they talk about abortion, when they talk about no reparation for black people, or if there's something got to do with what they call critical race theory, which most of the time that they're saying that they're teaching in school, that they're not, they're not teaching law in school. They'll talk hard. So I'm gonna try not to do that, but I'm gonna still be very direct. So I say they teach the Holy Scriptures in ignorance, and they must repent of teaching iniquity and lawlessness to Yah, God's earthly creatures, period. Those that teach that there is no law for us and that Jesus abolished the law. And when it's told to people that they must live according to God's holy word, when people tell you that that's not true, they need to repent of that. So let's look in the scripture and see why that takes place. In 2 Peter chapter 3, it's important that we see that 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 11 will give us an insight of what's going on. And so what's going on with that in 2 Peter chapter 3 and 11, I'm going to pull up another screen for you. So this screen that I'm going to pull up is going to work better for me for us today. Let me pull it here, 3 and 4. 3 and 11. Let's look at what the Bible says. Peter had just got through talking in the first chapter and said that unless you add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge and knowledge and brotherly kindness and to that charity, he said, if you don't add those things to yourself, you're going to forget that you were cleansed. And he said, it's going to make it where you end up being unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, for a person that's unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, one must take into consideration that Peter had been there when the Messiah taught in John 15, that every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes them away and they are burned. He tells them that they must abide in him and therefore, Peter is building on or teaching what was taught by Messiah. So he gets to the third chapter in the ninth verse, and he tells them that the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, and he's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. So I move down to verse 11 after I've given you a context that Peter has shown that people, even when he was teaching, that they could become unfruitful, they could, they could turn away from the Most High God. But what he is showing is that here is the importance of knowing that we are still under God's holy Torah. And I'm going to explain what the Torah is, but let's get to the place. Why is there so much confusion about God's law? A lot of it has to do with our English translation. And much of it has to do with some people still have a veil over their eyes as 2 Corinthians chapter 3 talks about. And some people have made the statement and they have taken the two words and interchanged them where it says the veil is done away with Christ. It didn't say his law. It didn't say God's word is done away with Christ. It's the veil. When you get a chance to see what the Messiah taught in, when we talk about Christ, what Christ does, he goes through and does exactly what Exodus chapter 21, 22, and 23 does. That what we call the Ten Commandments were given in chapter 20. 21, 22, and 23 gives the commentary and tell you what it means not to steal, tells you what it means not to kill, because you might not think that killing is the same as stealing a man and making him a slave. But you see the punishment for that in Exodus 21 and 16 is that the person gets put to death. Well, when you start with the Sermon on the Mount, you begin to see the Messiah starts teaching you what does it mean to serve God? What does it mean to keep his holy and righteous law that he's writing in your heart? He tells you, you think that adultery, you heard that it was said in old time, you should not commit adultery. He said, but I say, if you look at a woman to lust after her, you've committed adultery in your heart. You've read before, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. He tells you in Matthew 6, he says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. 
They think they're going to be heard for their much talk and their vain repetition. The father hears. He knows. And there's many other such like things that you'll see. He's expounding upon the ten. But let's look at what is the, where the confusion comes from. So Peter says here in 2 Peter 3 and 11, seeing then all these things shall be dissolved. He's talking about the judgment at the end of the age. What manner of persons ought? Ought means that there is, it's not a suggestion, it's an obligation. See what manner of person you are obligated or you ought to be in all holy conversation. That conversation is not the same word that we use in English now where what you say, only what you're saying is actually dealing with anastrophe, which is your conduct. In all holy conversation in godliness, looking for and hasting. Now, a lot of people don't know, they don't pay this attention to uh, this script any attention. Looking for and hastening until the day of our Lord. So let me show you that word in the NIV. Okay, it's going to pop up on my right. I'm going to just make it open up so you can see it. It says, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That's what hastening means, to speed its coming. Because a lot of times we don't realize that. And so we think that God is waiting, waiting, and waiting. There is something for us to do. I understand people say there's nothing for us to do. In, in BDAG definitions, in that book, it tells you the word is to hurry, to hasten, and it's to be zealous, to in, exert oneself, to be industrious, okay? There's, on, there's one other one that I want you to see. Um, the Hasten Christian Standard Bible says, it opened up, it says, and wait for the day of God, hasten its coming. That's all I want to say on it because I've mentioned this before. So let's go back to where I was reading. Looking for and speeding up a hastening to the day of the coming of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent. Not diligent with what you think or what you feel, but be diligent with whatever it is he's going to show and whatever the Messiah has taught, that you may be found in him in peace. He never says anything that since Jesus died, you're going to be found in him in peace. He tells you to see and that you look forward to be diligent. Now, for those that don't know, this says it's a verb, aorist, active imperative. The only reason I'm giving you this part of speech is that it's a command. It's a command that you be diligent, that you may be found in him in peace. And account the long suffering of the Lord is salvation. Even, here we go, as our beloved brother Paul, according to the wisdom given him, have written unto you, as also in all of his epistles, all of his letters that you read in the scripture, whether it's Titus, whether it's first or second Corinthians, Romans, Galatians, especially those in all of his epistles, speaking in them of these things in which some things are hard to be understood, that they which are unlearned, I said it, he said it, unlearned and unstable rest, that word rest, strebelu, it means twist. Look at twisted deception. They unlearn, they rest as they also do the other scriptures. Not only is he validating and authenticating that Paul wrote scriptures, but he said people twist the scriptures to their own destruction. Now, if you're taught that Jesus fulfilled all of God's law and there's nothing else you can do, and I heard a man make fun, talking about if there's anything you can do to save yourself, you don't have God and you're a fool. Then Peter, based on what he's saying, is a fool. If you're going to be consistent. Now, please understand, the reason for this sometimes is our English, and the reason for this also is that many times we might use a Dates Bible 
We might use an ESV Bible commentary, not commentary, but study Bible. We may lose different kind of study Bibles or Schofield study Bible. I own all of those. I own a lot of them. But then the thing is, is what does the scripture say? It says, he speaks in them things that are hard. Look, the word here, let me, I hope I got my volume on because if I don't have my volume on, it would probably mean that other stuff is not, yay, I got it on. I want you to hear the word, okay? Deus noetos. Deus noetos, dealing with the mind, okay? Difficult to understand. I, I, when I make it go louder, I really would like for it to be heard and I'll be looking to see if my wife tells me I can't be heard anymore since I interjected this. Now let's listen to the word again. Deus noetos. Deus noetos. You can look the word up. It says they are hard to be understood and they which are unlearned, untaught, untaught, and unstable. They, wet, they rest, they twist the scriptures. Now notice verse 17. Now that we see that there's some things that Paul said are difficult to understand. And now that we see, even Peter says back at this time, people twist the scriptures. And that what they're doing, they're going to be teaching the wrong thing. So Peter says in verse 17, ye therefore beloved, seeing that you know these things, that Paul says some things that are hard to understand, that some people are unlearned and unstable, they twist those scriptures as they do others to their own destruction. If you're following them and they're teaching something to their own destruction, how is it going to give you anything that will keep you from being destroyed? Verse 17 says, Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that you know these things before, beware, beware, beware. This is, uh, this is what he's telling you. It's another imperative. It's a, com a command. Lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked. Wait a minute. Because you twist Paul's scriptures or because you don't understand, let's just say you take one of the word and untaught and you don't understand the scriptures. He says, beware lest you also be led away. Look at this. Listen, you want to hear the word? I'll let you hear it. Sunapago. Sunapago means to be led astray. And what is it, what is it talking about? Uh, to be led astray. It means to be damned. It means to move away from what the most high God has for you. It says, fall is a led away with error from the wicked and fall from your own steadfastness. Epipto is to lose the state where you are. In other words, you move away from God most high because you don't want to do the word or because they taught you something wrong about the word, what it has to say. And therefore you end up being destroyed like they do. And he says, let you be led away with the error of the wicked and fall away from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace. When you say grace, don't go just thinking that God just done something. Titus says the grace of God has appeared to all men teaching us to deny ungodliness and worldly lust, to live soberly and righteously and godly in this present age. Grace is not just there, just to be there. It's there to empower. It's there to teach. It's there to help you do and accomplish the most holy will of God. But you grow in grace and in the knowledge, where you going to get the knowledge from your feelings? from his revealed word of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to him be glory both now and forever amen so what does that have to do with Torah it has everything to do with Torah you want to see the you want to see when God start talking about Torah and how important his law is let's go to Genesis 26 and 5 let's get let's let's get our hats on now it's time to do some great work for the most high God because I said that I'm planning on proving something today. So in order to prove it, I need to get started on it. I've shown you the reason that I believe that there's so much difficulty because people have a superficial reading of the Bible. They don't really try to understand things. They'll talk about the Pharisees and they'll say a person is legalistic. They won't go back and do any reading or history 
And when you don't go back and do any re reading of history, you don't know that they were the Hasidim. You don't know that there were groups called Pharisees, Essenes, Zealots, etc. You won't know that. And we all begin at once to start thinking the Pharisees were the representative or the representation of everybody that did not love God. You forget the scripture where Jesus gave in Matthew 23 that these people had their own set of traditions and law. And he said they would encompass the whole world and make one proselyte. And then after they do, they make them a twofold child of hell as they are. They forget that they say that they sit in Moses' seat and all that they bid unto you do, but don't do as they do for they say and do not. You forget that in Matthew chapter 15, he shows you that they have their tradition that they elevate above the word of God. So you start one start thinking that they didn't know what God's word say. And so what you're doing is you're comparing God's righteous law to what the Pharisees taught and what they were teaching with their tradition. And I can understand that. But there should come a time after 20, 30, 40 years, we should begin to understand that the scriptures were written during the time period where there were people in the ancient East. You had people around Turkey, you had people in Africa, you had people in uh, Ethiopia, you had people coming in all parts of the world from Parthia, etc. Where do you get that from, Tim? Acts chapter 2. They would come there three times a year. So the Bible teaches when we talk about the things that are important and we talk about Torah, it mentions it in Genesis. So let's go to Genesis chapter 26 and two. I said five, but I want to get a little background for you. The Bible says, and the Lord appeared unto him. We're talking about Isaac now. And he tells him, go not down to Egypt, dwell in the land, which I shall teach thee. So journey in the land and I will be with thee. I will bless thee. For unto thee and to thy seed, I will give all these countries. He's telling Isaac he's going to give them these countries. Don't think that the people in those countries are going to lay down and give it up. He's going to have to go possess the gates of these people. I submit to you, this is what is happening at the Passover. They're going to go in and get the countries that are being promised to Isaac that had been promised to Abraham. And this is what the Messiah is saying in Matthew 28. Go ye into all the world and you teach the people to observe what I command you. He says in Matthew 28 and 16, it's not 28 and 16, it's 16 and 18. The gates of hell will not prevail against God. It's not saying the gates of hell coming to attack you. It's you going in to conquer and the gates of hell is not want to stop us from doing his will. But if you want to go and possess, what standard are you going to teach the people? What are you going to teach them how to live and how to rule? They already got their own laws. Like I tell our people, if right now the United States of America, the UN or whoever had anything to do with it, gave us three states to live in, what laws will we en enact? The laws that are right now being written against us in the Constitution that was against us in the Bill of Rights that did not allow you to have a gun and a, a declaration of independence. They say that you were born a slave and you stay a slave, but people don't understand that. When it says all men are pretty much created equal, no, that's Roman's law. In Roman law, if you were created and born a slave, you stay a slave. Playing with words so that when you read it, you think it has everything to do with you included or you get taught that that's not true. So you're going to possess the gates of your enemies. You want to go and get the countries. This is what Pat, this is why Passover, Easter, Res Resurrection Day, I don't teach it like that. Because you you think that the resurrection was it. And you don't even consider that he had to ascend to heaven to get the authority as man. He already had his God. He's taking Adam place. And then by him getting the kingdom and dominion given to him in Daniel uh, 7 and 13. In Daniel 7 and 18, he gives it to his people. And you see that in Matthew 28. Go ye into all the world and do what I said. All right, now let's read. I will give you all these countries and I will perform the oath that I swear unto thy father Abraham. He, will, he has never been God to tell you what to do and will not help you do it. So don't make a false a dichotomy between the old covenant and the new because you misunderstand Paul. Okay? 
I understand there's an element where God, there is a part of an element where he imposes his law on hearts of stone and they don't obey. But don't tell me that Caleb didn't have another spirit. Please don't tell me that Joshua didn't have another spirit. Please don't tell me Hezekiah and different ones didn't have another spirit. Some people, they were able to see and had a heart to perceive and their hearts were circumcised. <laughs> And they got the benefit because even Paul says in Romans chapter 7, the law is spiritual. It's always been spiritual. But man has often shown himself to be obstinate. He says, listen to this. He said, I will make your seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed all of the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now let's move into Torah. Let's go about proving that Torah is still here and that anyone that mocks Torah, they're teaching wickedly, they're teaching lawlessness, and they need to repent. I said today, if a person mocks and disdain Torah, they'll never be saved. So let's look at it. So he said, I'm going to do all this for you, Isaac, because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge and kept my commandments and my law. Let's start looking at what did Abraham, I'm gonna to go to the last word and say he kept my laws, okay? When I see, he said this, law. This is what is called the Lexham Theological Word Book. It's just one of my dictionaries. You can see when I clicked on Torah, laws here, Torah comes down at the bottom, but today I'm making it open so you can see a dictionary, Torah. Feminine law, statute, statute teaching or custom. Abraham kept my instruction. Let me come slide down. The whole mosaic legislation is summed up as rules. Hawk, we'll talk about that. Regulations of misspots. In Deuteronomy, Torah begins to take precedence over the term. Okay? Not something that's just made up. But if you, we don't know these things, we'll start saying, well, you know, the Torah is just the first five books of the Bible. It's called that. But the first five books of the Bible give you the legislation and the orchestration of what God wants. And the thing is, is what he always wanted is for uh, people that would obey his voice. Now, let's, 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 let's look at what's going on here. I want to go back to 26 and 5 and get the first part. Abraham obeyed my voice. That's the most important thing that you can see. I'm going to submit to you that Torah is the voice of the Lord. I'm going to submit to you that if you look up the word Torah, you're going to see call. What we would call Q-O-L. Look at your context. Look at the content and you'll begin to see, wait a minute. God has always had instructions, his instructions, his rule, his regulation to govern the world and to govern the people and to govern your home is called Torah. Now, I understand this is technical, but by things not being technical, when Paul gives things, people that are unlearned and unstable, they twist the scripture to their own destruction. So let's, let's open it up. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge. The word charge here is mismeret. Those that are looking with me, it's M-I-S-M-E-R-E-T. I want you to see what this word means. It's a duty. It's a guard. Notice the word mismeret often refers to God's commandments that must be kept. In Genesis 26 and 5, God reviews Abraham's life by saying that he listened to my voice and kept my charge. Mismeret, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. If you never understand that he is talking about his voice, when he gets to the point where he said he kept my commandments, which is miswa, commandments, stipulations, teachings. This is what Abraham, he kept my commandments and teachings. It wasn't written down. He heard it and he obeyed. He kept my commandments, my statutes. When he talks about his statutes, this is what we call hop. It's the word here is the Hebrew. I don't like the word Jewish because a lot of times Jewish are Talmudic and people don't make the distinction. But it says the Jewish and Aramaic meaning to hollow out, to engrave. In other words, 
when he says that word, his, his hawk, he kept that things that are engraved as written down. Let me read, make it a little clearer. It says the verb haka or hakuk, H-A-Q, A-Q. Sometimes it's just H-A-Q-A. It says the, in the Old Testament, in the verb, it can be assigned to three things or three semantic groups to carve out or to engrave. It's important that we see that this is what is being done. I slid down for the sake of time to the concrete meaning of the abstraction of the word. Hookah, they appear in terms for ordinances, legal precepts, and in few cases, however, there appears to be more of a concrete meaning. What we're looking at, and I understand that it may seem like I'm being technical, but I must be. Thank you. God has regulations. When you say he has no more law, you say he has no more regulations, you say at this juncture, we can do things the way that we want to. And in by do, and doing those kind of things, we'll always be outside of God's will. So he obeyed my voice. That's primary. He kept my charge. He kept my statutes and he kept my Torah. And I just read to you a little earlier that that is pretty much set up is the teachings of God. Now, let me show you in Deuteronomy 44, where it says this is pretty much how they start using or labeling all together, hearing God's voice, the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 4, 44. Did I say Deuteronomy 44? I said something that don't exist. Not in your Bible, Patrick. Not in your Bible, Pastor Gray. Deuteronomy 4 and 44, listen. This is the Torah which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies, the statutes, and the judgments which Moses spake to the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt while they are before they go in to conquer the countries and that the gates of hell of those other nations will not prevail and then they will fulfill what else is in chapter four. The other nations will come and learn about your God through your laws, through your justice, through your peace. Was I clear? Yeah. I love it when you say I'm clear. Now let's look at something really sweet and really delicious. The Bible says, Abraham obeyed my voice, didn't he? And say he kept my charge. What was the major charge that God gave Abraham? Let's look at Genesis 17 and 1. The Bible says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, Yahweh appeared to Abram. We don't, don't just think it's a vision. He appeared to Abram and said, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Now, this is Genesis 17. He tells Abram, walk before me and be perfect. That's his charge. Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my statutes, he kept my charge. This is the charge. People say you can't be perfect. You can't be a person that's blameless. That's what the word means to be blameless. Abraham did not have a Mosaic law. He had God's voice, though, and his voice is always the instruction. His voice is always the law. Let me explain it without reading the Bible. If you believe that God is judge of all of the earth, and he is, what is he going to judge by your feeling, my feeling, or is he going to judge by his word, which is his law? Whether he justifies or condemns, we're always under his law. Now, I understand there are some things that people have problems with, but let's, let's at least look at what is true. And then he says, if you walk before me and be perfect, notice I'm giving you the commandment first, and I will make my covenant. But wait a minute. I'm telling you what to do, and now I'm going to give you my law. I will make my covenant with thee and with thy seed, and saying I will multiply thee exceedingly, etc." We know that he's going to conquer the land. His descendants will conquer the land. How do we work with that? How do we see that in line of that? People say, we don't have a law now. Well, we got, we got to do better. We can't be like everybody else because if we like everybody else, what good is it that the Most High gives us his instruction? What good is it that he teaches us things? So I want you to look and see why there's so much confusion 
when it comes to the things of God. Let's go in your Bible to Ephesians chapter 2. I want you to look at verse 12 with me. I want you to see that when God made promise to Abraham, the covenants, the covenants that are made will not nullify the promise. The promise was made, and then he said, I will make my covenant. I, I know what I read. So he says, he's talking to people in Ephesus that had believed in witchcraft. They had magical books, and they had powers. He says that at that time, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of the promise. I know it's a, the pro, I say promising, but I'm looking behind the, in the English and the word is whole epangelia. You were strangers from the covenants that came from the promise. The promise was given before it was ever written down and made a covenant. The covenants of the promise is the most how working things out so that we can have this desired end. That was the covenant that God made with Israel when they came out in the Passover. He told them what he was going to do with it for them. And they did some things that he made covenants that helped ensure for them that they know his rule, his regulations, how to live, okay? And it says having no hope and without God in the world. Now let's go get ready to do some good work. You already do some hard work? I know you are. Let's go to Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. Let's go to, you laughing at me now, get it out, let it out, let it feel better. Cause it felt like, sound like uh, Elmer Fudd to me. Deuteronomy, go to Deuteronomy 29 and 29, please. The Bible says the secret things belong to Yahweh our God, but those which he revealed belong to us and our children forever and ever. Did the Most High God give his Torah? Did he not give his instruction? Did he not give his instruction on how to worship him, how to deal with him, how to deal with one another? Did that come from man or was it revealed by him? It was revealed by him and it's called Torah. The secret things that he don't tell you belongs to him, but the things that he revealed belong to us and our children forever and ever that we may do all the words of this Torah, of this law. Let's go to 30 and 31. Now what I need you to understand, I'm gonna have to have two Bibles open so we can really have some fun. In 30, chapter 30, verse 1, I probably said it wrong, Garrett. Every time I say something wrong, you correct me so I don't get you read one thing and I'm reading another. And you say, Tim, making this up as he goes. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 1, come up to 29, 29. All of that that we were reading in 29 was curses that God said, I'm going to bring on you if you turn away from me and not follow my righteous instruction. I will destroy you. I will wipe, I will scatter you all over the earth. But if you don't believe what I'm saying is right, write down Deuteronomy 28 and 16 and you read the 29 and 29 on your own and you will say, I did not lie. So he says, and it shall come to pass 30 and one that when all these things are come upon thee, the blessing and the curse, which I have set out before thee. Yes, I'm a judge. I am the judge. There are rewards. One can be a blessing, one can be a curse. Either way, you're going to be rewarded for your life. It says, which I have set before thee, you shall call them to mind among the nations whither the Lord thy God has driven thee. And if thou return unto Yahweh thy God and obey his voice. This is what I kept talking about in Genesis 26 and 5. This is Torah obeying his voice. If you miss that, you miss the whole message. You miss everything that you need to know. You miss uh, on so much of what God most high has for you that you will be outside of his will so long, so far, it is messed up. So if you want to be messed up, you're in the wrong place today. Because I want to bring the but naked word of God in such a way that you can taste the juice. All right, so it says, return unto the Lord your God. That's repent. The word he is shub or to shub. He's talking to Israel, you all. He's not talking to the Gentiles yet. Deuteronomy is to the children of Israel that live after the parents died. 
I'm not saying it's not going to go to the nation. It will go to the nation, but primarily right here, we're talking to Israel that are the descendants of Abraham that have already had his Torah given because Abraham passed it down and they went against what God said. So he gave it to them on stone. And how do we know? It says, if you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice, according to all that I command this day, thou and thy children, he said in Deuteronomy 29 and 29, it was that law was to you and your children forever and ever, right? Okay, I know I'm right. Then it says, with all thine heart and with all thy soul. Right here, he's telling them to love God. That's the commandment of God. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Verse three, that then the Lord will turn away thy captivity, have compassion on thee, and will return and gather thee from all nations whither the Lord your God has scattered thee. Four, 30 and four, if thine is if any of thine be driven out to the uttermost part of the earth, heaven, from thence will the Lord God gather thee, and from thence he will fetch thee. Verse five is really, we should be able to seize in on something, okay? When we get to verse six, don't, don't, don't let your mind wander. And Yahweh thy God will bring you to the land which thy fathers possess, and you shall possess it, and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers. Listen, and Yahweh thy God will circumcise thine heart. You had God's law on stone, but your heart wasn't circumcised as a whole nation. Some people's heart were. It says, and the heart of your seed to love God with all thine heart and with all thy soul that you may live. You will keep the Shema. Hear, O Israel, your Lord your God is one. You will love him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. But, but to some people, they don't know what that means. They say, since we have Jesus, we saved. We don't need any of that from the Old Testament, which is a God damnable, stinking, putrefied lie. You know what some putrefied is? I meant to say petrified. So I'm going to say putrefied and petrified lie. Yeah, something, can, something can get so old it becomes like stone. Look at this. Listen to me again. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, that you mayest live. Loving God, listen to what the Bible say loving God is. Because if we don't understand what loving God is, one of the first things we're going to do is go and think about our feelings. We're going to think about what we think. And when we go and think about what we think, we're going to be so far outside of God's will that we ain't even going to recognize the word of God. So what the Bible say loving God is, I don't know why my screen ain't going where I want it to, but I'm going to make it. Give me just a second. All right. So I'm here. I want you to open it, 1 John 5, 3 and 4. I could quote it, but it's important sometimes for people to see what I'm saying because when you say you're going to prove something, I don't want nobody to be able to say, Tim said so-and-so. You can go back and look at it, either find fault with it or find it is right. 1 John 5 and 4, one of the apostles of the Messiah says, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. His commandments are not grievous. People say we can't keep it, and Abraham kept it before it was ever written on stone. You're telling me when you say you can't keep his commandments, you can't obey the voice of God. This is what we're saying. Do you believe that? Do you believe that we can't obey the voice of God, but we demand our children to obey our voice? We command people that we pay to obey our voice on the job, and yet we get a chance to hear that kind of folly coming from people and we're comfortable with it. I'm not comfortable with that kind of lie. Listen to John 14 and 15. The Messiah says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now he said, I'm going to circumcise the heart of you and your children that you'll keep my commandments. I'm going to submit to you and tell you ahead of time that what's being said in Deuteronomy is being said by the Christ, the one that we call Jesus before he came to earth in a human body. And he's the same person there as he is when he comes to earth. I know what I'm talking about and I ain't playing with you. First John 2 and 5 says, Whoso, but whoso keepeth 
his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby we know that we are in him. You say you're in him and you don't keep his word. You are a God damnable liar. I wish I could say it harder. If I could just maybe put 30 pound weights in my mouth and say it that heavy. You are a God damnable liar. Whoso keeps his word in him, not your feelings, is the one that obeys. Listen to the sixth verse. He that say he abideth in him, ought himself also to walk even as he walked. He who say he abideth himself is what? All is what is not a suggestion, it's an obligation. You are obligated to walk as he walked. Listen to what he says in John, Gospel of John 15 and 10. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love, my protection, my fellowship, even as I have kept my father's commandment and abide in his love. We're telling people you don't have to do anything. We're telling you always in Jesus. This is not what this scripture says. If, that's conditional. It's conditional in every way. Listen to what it says in John 14 and 21. Because he said he's going to circumcise your heart that you would love God. Didn't he say that? Didn't he say it? So what did the Messiah say when he's explaining what's going on in the world concerning his father and himself? He that has my commandments, he that has my voice, he that has my Torah, he that has my commandments, my statutes, my ordinances, he that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved by my father, and I will love him and will manifest myself unto him. I'm not going to read 24. 24 say, if you don't, if you don't love me, you won't keep my commandments. Take it to Revelation. Take it to the end of the Bible. The Bible says in Revelation 22 and 14, blessed are they that do his commandments. They're telling you that that's legalism. This is John in the spirit on the Lord's day, speaking in words that can be understood. So don't go saying there was no interpreter. You're telling a God damnable lie. He says, blessed are they which do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and that they may enter into the gates of the city. But outside of dogs, you want to let somebody tell you you don't want to keep his commandments? Listen to that dog that don't bark. That's why Isaiah called them sorcerers. What do you mean sorcerers? You got another way to obey. You got a way that you're going to go to God without obeying his Torah, without obeying his law. Then you are a witch. You are a warlock. What did the Bible say? 15th chapter, 1 Samuel 23. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. They teach you to rebel against God's law. That is witchcraft. And it says iniquity and idol iniquity as and stubbornness is as idolatry. So iniquity, lawlessness. And stubbornness, I'm not going to obey God, is the same as idolatry. So he says, for without a dog, the sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whoso loveth and maketh a lie. I'm couldn't even make the Deuteronomy. I needed to bring that out because now we, we're rolling, and I can go back and refer to it. Deuteronomy 30 and 6 is where we were. And the Lord will circumcise your heart and your seed to love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's what he means. He's going to circumcise your heart to obey his voice. Keep his commandments. That's why when you say all things work together for good to them that love God, it's not just a thought. It's those that keep his commandments. The Bible is consistent. And to them who are the called according to his purpose, or for whom he did know, he also did predestinate that they should be conformed to the image of his son. Now, I want, you to, I want you to taste this. This is so good. And the Lord your God will put all these curses on your enemies and on them that hate thee and persecute thee. I need you to hear this. Let me clap my hands so I can get your attention. 30 and 8 that he's given to his people. And thou shalt return and obey the voice. There it is again. Obey the voice of Yahweh and do and do his commandments, which I command thee this day. We're taught we don't have to do them. I'm saying he's telling them that you got to do Torah. Obey my voice. 
Listen to what he says. It's so good. He said, he'll bless the work of your hand, the fruit of your body, in verse nine, the fruit of your land. He'll rejoice over you to do you good as he rejoiced over your fathers, verse 10. If you will hearken unto the voice, if you will obey, listen to the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments, his statutes, which are written in the book of this Torah. Look at it, Torah. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, what is he saying? Because people will say with their lips that are blaspheming, they will twist the scriptures as they do the other scriptures. Yes, they will. I know that they will. It's in them to do wickedness. It's in them to go outside of God's will. So now I need you to go to Romans chapter 10. I want you to see how this works for us. We got to see it. Romans 10. I'm going to show you Romans 10 is actually talking about Torah. What? Yes. Let me go to verse 1 because I, I need to go ahead and start with 1. Because for those that don't know any better, they love Romans 10, 9, and 10. I'm going to either make you love it and appreciate it or hate it today with all my might. I'm going to try to either get you to gather, gather or scatter, okay? I'm going to either get, try to get you to gather or scatter or be for him or against him. Romans 10, 1, it says, Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God is for Israel that they might be saved. Verse 2, Romans 10, 2, for I bear them record they have a zeal of God and not according to knowledge. I've already explained to you before in Matthew chapter 15, they had a certain way they washed their hands. They had certain ways that they dishonored their parents. And he said, you go and you invalidate the commandment of God by your tradition. And that was not what God was doing. And this is the zeal of God that they had. Read Matthew 23. Don't tell me nobody, everybody that was there, had they didn't they, they were, had a zeal of God, not according to knowledge. Talk about Anna. Talk about Simeon. Talk about John the Baptist. Don't play. Quit collapsing things in the scripture and read it and let him teach you. He said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness are going about to establish their own. That's why they had the different things that they did on Sabbath. That's why they had the things that you can say, I don't want to do anything for my parent. This is why you got all of these things where you got somebody else giving you a high priest, Rome giving you a high priest. This is why you got an Esau or Idumean, an Edomian Jew over your name, Herod, it's because you went to establish your own and you left Torah. You've been doing it all throughout the scripture, getting high places, following Baal and my aunt Moloch. Don't go just taking the scriptures that all of them did it. The law was no good. They being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. What is the righteousness of God, you all? Do you all remember? If you don't remember, let's, let's roll back to it. Romans chapter 8. Verse number four, let me put it in here. Romans eight, numero four. It says the righteousness, the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What does that mean? Well, we can quote eight and one. Therefore, th there is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. If we say that we know him, and keep not his commandments, we are liar. We read that. Then we read John 15 and 10. Those individuals that keep his commandments will abide in his love. You're going to be in him, you're keeping his commandments. There's no condemnation to you. You're not just in Christ Jesus because you went to church. It says, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus have made me free from the law of sin and death. That's the law you're, you're redeemed from. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. Today, I'm emphasizing Torah. That's the law of the spirit. The law is spiritual and the law is good. It's we the one that messed up. Listen, he sent his son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. What do you think all his teaching was for? To teach us how to love, teaching us, teach us not to hate our brother without a cause, to teach us not to say reka, 
that teach us to look at false prophets and not follow them, that teach us that if you're right out of you, you better stop what you're looking at. That's what he taught. He was teaching how Torah really affects your life in every day. It was nothing new. He was explaining away from the traditions. Okay, let's go back to where we were, sweet, swinging on the juices of the word. So Romans 10 and 6 says, but the righteousness of faith speaketh not speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend to heaven, that is to bring Christ from above. Now let's go back to Deuteronomy 30. I'm going to read 10 through 12. It says, if you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and keep his commandments and his statutes, which are written in this book of Torah, and if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, for this commandment which I command you this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. Verse 12. I want you to listen to verse 12 and compare it to Romans 10 and 6. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it down unto us that we may hear and do it. This is what Moses is saying. Listen to what Paul said. But the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, say not in your heart, who shall ascend to heaven or go up into heaven? That is to bring Christ down. When Moses says is to bring it down, he's talking about bring Torah, bring the commandments, bring the laws, bring the statutes. Paul is saying the laws, the statutes, the commandment is Christ. What do you think John said in the beginning was the word? The word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made that was made and in him was life and the life was the light of man. The light shined in the darkness. The darkness could not overcome or comprehend it not. Then he tells you in verse 14, and the word was made flesh. You don't have to go get it. The most High God has sent the word. Woo! He sent the word. He, Jesus, the Messiah, is the instruction, the word of God. Look at it. I need you to understand. I ain't making this up. 10 and 12, Deuteronomy, who shall go up for us to heaven to bring it unto us that we may hear and do it. 30 and 12, what did I say? Yeah, 30 and 12. You're, you're a beautiful man, Gary. Now let's go, let's look again at in what we call the New Testament, 10 and 6. The righteousness of faith. Say, not in your heart who shall ascend into heaven, that is to bring it or bring Christ down from above. Verse 7. Who shall descend into the deep? The word is abusos. That's like under the earth. And the deep, that is the brain, Christ again from the dead. Let's look at where he's pulling from. Deuteronomy, remember he said, my heart desire prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. He's talking to Israel primarily because Israel got to get right because Jesus was sent first to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And after that, he said in John 10 and 16, I got other sheep, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring. And there'll be one shepherd and one flock. And he told them when they received power, from the Holy Spirit, then they would go into all the world. But first, we're dealing with home because the promise was made to the fathers and it was made to the children of Israel. Passover was to bring them out after they were separated to God Most High. Passover was to get you to the place where you would see what I could do to other gods. The wilderness is so you can see what I could do for you. And now I'm giving you my covenants and my laws so that you will know how to deal with the other nations and so that you don't get out of line with me no more. But it's also to make a covenant that if you do these things, I'm going to do this. But the promise had already been made. <sighs> Glory to God. So let's read again 13, Deuteronomy 30 and 13. Neither is it beyond the sea. The word here is yom. They believed that the sea, under the sea, was where the sea monsters and the behemoth, not the behemoth, uh, what's the other one, the, the, the dragon, and uh, there's another one, I think, Rahab. But anyway, in the, the sea, the abusos is where, under the earth, you got three parts in the world. You have heaven, you have earth, 
and under the earth, okay? Neither, neither is it beyond the sea that you should say, who should go over the sea for us to bring it? He was talking about Torah and hearing his voice, that we may hear and do it. When Paul goes in the, in the verse 7 of Romans 10 and 7, or who shall descend into the deep, the abusos, that is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Don't think that he's talking about this and it don't mean to do it, because I'm going to prove that he means to do it, and not that you say a prayer after somebody did a sermon and you don't know nothing about him, you don't know anything about the word, you don't even know you need to obey him, you just say, okay, I'm going to take him as some insurance. I'm going to get on the plane. I ain't scared I'm going to die, but it's a dollar for a million dollars worth of insurance. I'll go ahead and pay the dollar. Then it says, verse 14, Deuteronomy 30 and 14, but the word, that's the it, but the word is neither in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. We got a thing where we don't believe that we got to do anything to please God. Then he says in verse 15, see, I have set before thee this day life and good, death and evil. And that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God, which is going to mean keep his commandments. Look at it. Love the Lord thy God, walk in his ways, keep his commandments, his statutes and judgments that you mayest live and multiply. And Yahweh my God will bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. But this is what people don't like about God. Verse 17 said, but if in thine heart, but if in thine heart, but if thine heart turn away so that you will not hear, hear my voice, hear my law, hear my Torah, but thou shalt be driven away to worship other gods and serve them. I denounce unto you this day that you shall surely perish. Well, you say, but this New Testament, well, let's look and see because we got the eighth verse. Eight verse to go with Deuteronomy chapter 30, 14. The word is nigh thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. Okay, what does, what does verse eight say in Romans 10? But what saith thee? The word is nigh thee in thy mouth. This wouldn't have been in the Gentiles' mouth. They didn't know the law. They were strangers from the commonwealth of Israel. From, they were strangers from the covenants of the promise. They will learn about them. But that's why I'm sending my disciples out. The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. I submit to you that the word of faith is the word that you are to obey. Somebody say, don't say obey. Does not the Bible teach that, well, I just let me read, which we preach, because I'm telling you something, when we preach, we're talking. If thou confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, I need you to understand what that is, the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead. In other words, brought, brought the word from the dead, you shall be saved. So we're going to have to learn words, but we don't have to make a career out of it. What is Lord in the scriptures? So I need you to say I'm in what is called the Lexham Theological Word Book. The word Lord, let me go back here and show what the word is in Greek. The word is kurios, K-U-R-I-O-S, kurios, or the manuscript is kurion. What in the world does that word mean? Because we think the Lord Jesus is just the Lord Jesus. So in reading, I've already highlighted some of the stuff it says. However, the association of the word curios with the risen and exalted Jesus is an early Christian confession that acknowledges the superiority of Jesus over all things. I would submit to you the reason that this person say Christian is because he's a Christian. So we can skip that and just look and see what does it mean by itself. And so it gives Romans 10 and 9, 14 and 9, etc. It says, and the universal rule over behalf of all. So Tim, what in the world is that? So I want you to see when I go back to where it says um, Jesus, I'm going to go to another panel. Give me a second, pull it up. And I'm going to go to a Greek Bible. When I go to this Greek Bible, we're going to be able to pull some juice. I'm going to show you that kurios means Yahweh. That's what I mean. That's, that's all I'm getting ready to show you. 
I'm going to show you that the word curios is the Greek word in many cases, and especially this one, where it says Yahweh. So here I have curios, okay? Curios. If you can't see it, so it'll just say uh, hostoma Jesus kai pistio, and it's those words as that's the Lord Jesus. Uh, I wish I had it where everybody could see, but since I don't have it where everybody can see, I have to tell it to you. And let me click on the right thing and we move from there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is go over here and take the American Standard version of 1901. The reason I'm picking this one, you all, is because that's the one that would translate and that I have in a linear to that will show you how that word for um, curious was used. So I'm gonna go to Psalm, you can go there in your Bible, Psalm 27, verse number one. It says here in the American Standard that, that this is the version, really how the Jehovah's Witness got their start. Not that the version was wrong, but it used the J of Martin Luther instead of saying Yahweh. So it says, Jehovah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? When I click on this, what it should do, it should take me from this version and bring me over here to the Greek version. And it says, Psalm 27 and 1, this is called for those, that's like, Tim, how are you doing this? This is a Lexham English Septuagint version. Why am I doing this? It's because when the Hebrew people no longer knew how to write in Hebrew, some of them that did, they translated the scripture into Greek. It says, the Lord, if you're looking on my panel with me, those that are watching, it'll say, the Lord is my light. It says, kurios mu. And when it says kurios mu, that means the Lord, my Lord. So kurios is the same thing as Yahweh when it says the Lord. How do you know that? Because you got the word here, Jehovah. And so when you begin to see that, you begin to understand that the same thing let me go back to because i'm seeing that from looking at the audience as i go through these words it's taking us away from the scripture the word yeshua the, the word salvation when it says the lord jesus it actually means salvation let me go back to that and see if i can just pull that up quickly and move on to, move on to the juice but well, that is part of the juice because not only did i have a lot of that listed i'm seeing that when I when I'm reading it and enjoying it, it might be a little different whenever I go out and teach it. So it says Jesus. When it says this, I want you to look at this. Those that see, I want you to see the places where when it said believe in the Lord Jesus, these are words here that say Jesus or Yeshua. Exodus 14 and 13. And Moses said unto the people, stand still and see the salvation. That's the Yeshua of the Lord. Tim, I don't believe it, but I'm going to show it to you. Deuteronomy 32 and 15. Look at it. I'm going to show you on the screen. But yes, you're on a yes, you're on wax fat and kick. Thou art wax fat and grown thick. Thou art covered. Then he forsook God which made him and esteemed the rock of his salvation. If you're looking on my page, the word is Yeshua. I got a list of so many of them that it's not funny. I think what I'll do is I'll give you one from the Psalms so that you can see it in the Psalm. Let's take some, I want to take one that people might know. Um, this Psalm 20 and five. I don't know if people know that or not, but in Psalm 20 and five, it says, we will rejoice in thy salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banner. The word salvation here is Yeshua. So, when it says, if you confess with your mouth, Yahweh, Yeshua. Somebody said, well, we ain't speaking, um, we ain't speaking Hebrew. But it doesn't matter that you don't speak Hebrew. What are we talking about conceptually? What are we speaking about categorically? We're speaking that Yahweh is the only source of salvation. You're not just saying Lord Jesus, and the Roman people knew that. That's why they said Caesar is Lord, because they said Augustus was God, or Tiberius was God, and Augustus was the only salvation in the earth. And so when you're saying this, this is like a death penalty. So if you confess what you got in Deuteronomy, if you confess that Yahweh is your only salvation and believe you're in your heart God has raised him from the dead. Do you will be so so saved? That's the same thing. It'll say Yesha. But with the heart, 
Man believeth unto righteousness. That's the word of faith. Hear my voice with the heart, not of stone. Man believes what Yahweh says in his law, in his Torah, in his instruction that he give us the land. He told to give you the land, give you the ability to rule. He believes unto salvation. Look, he said, confession is made to Yeshua or salvation. You believe to righteousness, which is the righteousness of his Torah. You don't have any righteousness of your own. And then when confession is made to salvation, for the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Yahweh, the same Lord, is rich over all that call upon him. Do you see how he first builds upon those that know? And then he said, wait a minute, the same is for other people. Because through Abraham, all of the families of the earth will be blessed. And it says, for whosoever call upon the name of Yahweh, we say, Lord, but whoever calls upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. And that's important for us to know. I want you to see something. If I click on Joel chapter 2, verse 32, listen to what Joel says. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I click on the word Lord and it's Yahweh. He's quoting from Joel. Whosoever shall call. Now, if you say Yahuwah, whoever call upon the name of Yahuwah. If you shorten it, whosoever call upon the name of Yah shall be delivered. These are the things that we're talking about. So it says, how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe on him he have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall he preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad, that bring glad tidings of good things. What do you mean, Tim? He's quoting from Isaiah 52. Listen, Israel, you got this in your prophecies. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him that bring good tidings and publish shalom, that publish shalom. He is the prince of peace. He makes peace. He don't come in with suggest suggestions. He come in with rules. He come in with regulations. He come in with penalties. He comes in with blessedness. He says, pu publish the gospel of peace and bring your good tidings and publish Yeshua. It says publish salvation. The, we supposed to be teaching Yeshua, but we don't divorce him from being the word. And the word is Torah. And then it says, thus saith Zion, thy God reigneth. Am I being clear at, at least a little bit? Yeah. Now notice in Deuteronomy, it keeps talking about obey my voice, obey my commandments. And, and, and don't be saying this up in heaven. Are you under the, he says in verse 16, but they have not obeyed the gospel. But Isaiah says, who have believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Let us recap. I said that there's a problem that some people have in things of Paul. When Paul said we're not under law, but under grace. Paul is talking about something with specificity. And often what we do, instead of dealing with specificity, we deal with abstractions or peace. So I say that there's Torah. I say that the word that it was going to bring down was Torah. Now, we covered this on Thursday, but just in case for those that skip and don't listen, I want you to see what happened. Huh? Yeah. So now let's look, let's look at Romans 7 and 12. I mean, not Romans, Hebrews 7 and 12 to see that the same Torah is today. In Hebrews 7 and 12, it says the priesthood being changed. Aaron's priesthood is changed because of the fact Aaron's priesthood was never to be forever. The Bible says the scepter would not depart from Judah. So it says the priesthood being changed is also made a necessity of law. For he did, it said, for he of whom those things spoken pertain to another tribe, which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord spring out of Judah, 
of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So when we start talking about these things, the things that the Bible talk about will remain in the law of those that can't be shaken. I'm really truncating. What can be shaken? The candlestick, the table of shoe bread, the animal, the blood of the animals, the bulls and goats. Christ's sacrifice can never be shaken. The temple in your heart. So when we move to that, we're going to be able to see something magnificent because they say that you don't have to obey anything. All you have to do is have faith. Let's move. I don't even want to go through all of the things that they did by faith. Let's move to chapter 12 because I don't, I don't want to be boring and I do want to be through in about five minutes. So let's go to Hebrews 12. All of those people, we got to do at least 39 and 40, then go to 12, Hebrews 11, 39 and 40. All of the people that's in Hebrews 11, they obtained a good report through faith. They heard the word of God. They did not receive the promise. God had provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. The Christ came, the Christ taught God's word. He lived, he died, he rose and received his kingdom. By him receiving his kingdom, we can now be brought up into what we call heaven with him and be in heavenly places seated with him right now, okay? Now he says, we've seen that we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. We're talking about Moses, Abraham, Sarah, Barak, those that were stoned, sawn asunder, those are our witnesses. He said, lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily, easily beset us. That's a command. How do you know what sin is? It's by God's word. It's by his law. Let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Yeshua Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He despised the shame. He said, consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners. Now he goes on down and tells you that there's some chastisement you get. If there's no law you go by, you don't get chastised. But I need you to understand this last important thing. He says in the 14th verse, chapter 12, verse 14, he says, follow peace with all men, holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Follow peace. He says, looking diligently, lest any man fail the grace of Christ. How can you fail the grace of Christ in the teaching that they have now? You can fail the grace of Christ because you don't look diligently. And he says, a root of bitterness springing up in you trouble you and you be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. He didn't want to stay with God's Torah for you know that how afterwards when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected and found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Quit telling people that they can always repent. You can't always repent. This is what this is saying. He used the illustration of Esau that when Esau sold his birthright and Jacob got the birthright, that it was no way to get it back. There was no way for, there was nothing found for repentance. And he's using that to let you know that even after Christ died, you still need to follow peace. You still need to look diligently that you fail the grace of Christ. This is what the Bible teaches. I don't care what your pastor say. It says for you, he said, don't be like Esau, but you know how afterwards, verse 12, 12 and 17, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. He said, you are not come to the mountain of Moses or the mountain that might not be touched that burn with fire and blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words, the voice of Torah, the voice of Christ at that time, which voice they heard and entreated that they should not be spoken to them anymore like we do today. They could not endure that which was commanded is so much a beast touching it should be it should be stoned or thrust through with a dart. And so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. You need 22. But you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the first, a general assembly of, and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to the judge of all men and the spirits of just men made perfect. There are people that were already made perfect. 
and the Jesus mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling, it sprinkles better things than that of Abel. I wanted to say this before I end. See that you refuse not him that speaketh. All of that some people say sometimes, everything Jesus said in the Sermon of the Mount don't matter after he died. Nothing matters but that he says, see that you refuse not him to speak it. For if they escape not who refuse him to speak on earth, Moses, much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him to speak it from heaven. He validated Torah. He is Torah. He is the voice of God. Get what Hebrews 1 and 1 says, but it says, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he promised yet more. I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Yet once more signifying the removing of those things that are shaken and the things that are made. That first tabernacle was made by hand. All the furnishings were made by hand. Those are gone. That the things that remain, the things which cannot shake and be shaken be remain. Those are the word of God. Wherefore we receive in a kingdom that cannot be moved. Let us have grace that we may serve God acceptably. Let grace help us serve him acceptably. With reverence and godly fear. Listen to this warning. Our God is a consuming fire. We went through you all in summation. Torah is instruction, the regulation, and the commitment of God. Sometimes it is reduced to just being the first five books of the Bible. But when you read throughout the scripture, when you see law, look it up. Get your Strong's Concordance or whatever you do, unless you speak Hebrew, you'll see it's Torah. You will see that it says that they they wanted to bring, they would want to bring it, and Paul said it's Christ from the deep, or bring it down, which is the Christ or the Torah from heaven. We begin to understand that He write our, His laws on our heart and in our mind. The stony heart we see in. I think it's 36 and 26 in the book of Ezekiel. He removes the stone and he writes on our heart of flesh these regulations with the explanation. And you say, well, Tim, if you say we got to do this, we don't need Christ. No, Christ is the one that's giving it to you. Christ is the one that's given the spirit to empower you. People did it before he came, lived and died and rose. How much more are we obligated? to go out into the world and possess the kingdoms of this world so the kingdoms of our Lord can become the kingdom of our Lord and our Christ. And he reigns forever and ever. We waiting on him to crack the sky and do it, but we can hasten his day by doing, it our, doing what we can do ourselves through his spirit. God has a law. He has a Torah. But those that are unstable, and unlearned, they think that he, we got a kingdom there with no laws, no rules, and yet God is still judge of all the earth. As a matter of fact, the son says, the father judged no man. He committed all judgment to me. Torah is important, you all. The voice of God, the word of God, if we're ever going to spread his kingdom, if we're ever going to be able to rule ourselves, and should God ever give us the ability to rule this land, we got to have instructions. And it's not going to be without the spirit. Father, thank you for your word, the warnings, and the equipment to rule this world, to rule in our home, and not have to be subject to the UN or Great Britain or any, any of these people that would come in and plunder us, make us their slaves. And I'm talking about in the mind right now. You've given us a freedom in your word. You said if we continued in your word, we could be your disciples indeed. We know the truth and the truth would make us free. And we would be your ambassadors and can reconcile men to you. Help us to realize the importance of not neglecting 
your word. Amen, amen, and amen. I open the class for discussion, rebuttal, comment, if there's any. Let's go into it. Did I make anybody angry today? Good. You made me strong. Say what, Andrina? I heard Andrina say something. Did I hear you say something, young lady? I said you made me strong. I made you strong? Okay. Um, you and I'm, I'm not even feeling that well, but I feel good. Well, thank the Lord. Tell us about it, please. Well, I was going to wait till Gary said whatever he had to say. Well, did you hear that, Uncle Gary? Speak it quick. I, said, I didn't really have anything to add. It was very clear. Um, it was very clear, uh, the connection. And it, and it just it just blows this, this ridiculous thing that the Old Testament has done away with. I mean, anybody, you can tell when people haven't really read the scriptures or read them well, you read and then, you know, to, to understand, I mean, you went to Romans 10 and we're talking about the first verse, I bear them record. Mm -hmm. They have a zeal according to knowledge. I mean, there's, there's a record. You know, who, who is Israel? I mean, you, you, you're not going to know who Israel is if you don't understand historically who, who they are. And you, well, you said a lot of, I said I didn't have anything to say, but as I keep talking, it seems that I'm, I'm wrong. Um, you, you phrased it something like, uh, the Passover or such was that he showed them how he conquered the gods and then he showed them how in the wilderness he was there with them and then when you go forward it shows them how I have other sheep of this fold so I mean he, he's always I think they call it the suzerain the suzerain mm -hmm. treaty yes you talk about the suzerain treaty it's like I'm over you and this is the terms of conditions and you better you better basically abide by them or I'm a, I'm going to, I'm going to, you will be put to death. You will be penalized. You, what, whatever it is, sooner than treaty. So you don't really get a say so in the matter, but in my mercy and in my letting you continue on and live, this is what I provide for you. It, and it, it's something that's done in ancient cultures and historically, but to see that he's sovereign and God above all gods, it's like there, it's, it's a warfare. And most people think that was, that it's supposed to be like, okay, we just say, okay, 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 okay. We acquiesce, but it, it, it's, it's been a warfare since the beginning. And to show you that, uh, no, I'm, 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 I'm captain of this ship and help us have the, the right mind, the right mind frame. It, 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 it is good. And to understand also, I mean, cause you, you were for a while, I imagine you'll go back to it and you're still there talking about the Trinity the, the Holy Spirit, the Son, and the Father. It was all in today's lesson, you know, whether you refer to it as such or not, it was there. You know, you refer to John, Gospel of John, the, the epistles of John, and I mean, the word was made flesh, you know, it's there, and then the, he, he's, he's the example. It, 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 was, it was really clear. Um, I liked it, and I, 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 I can, I can express the same thing that Ann did uh, about feeling good. This one, when I feel good, good, good. Hey, say that like right there. <laughs> I feel good, good, good. Well, I feel good down in my soul. Because there's something about the spirit of Jesus makes me feel good, 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 good. Bless his everlasting name that sits between the cherubim. Yeah. I'm, 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 you finished? I'm, I'm, yeah. Well, you can get some more. Andrina, he, he, he passed the baton, and Pastor Grace sitting there got his glasses off. Yeah, he did it. <laughs> Well, well, I'll, I'll not say anything. I'm gonna let Pastor Gray speak. Hey, Pastor Gray. I can't hear him well. 
He just said, hey, my sister, that's all. Then he stopped. I don't know who told him he could stop, but he showed he has some powers. Okay, Pastor Gray, go for it. That's bad too. I, I won't have no takeaway because it's just right. It's just what he just saw. It's just good, good, good. But there's emphasis on the title as well as the other scriptures about the grace of God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has a beard. And it, and it does teach us something. People don't want to be taught anything. There's various reasons why people don't want to be taught anything because when, the, when you have the teaching, if you, let's go back to John and say people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. And because their deeds are evil, you, you mentioned something about feeling. We, we really need to be careful about feeling because it says a carnal man is enmity against God. And so a lot of times we think eyes, hands, smelling, but there is another deeper uh, sense, and that's how we feel. It's intangible, yet it can totally move us into the opposite direction. And so when you look at how, what, how in the garden, was man moved it's because of his, his heart and so the heart must be circumcised and you you did the voice it shaman the voice shaman the voice it was it was totally there it's all through the scriptures you obey what you hear and there's some time there it don't say lay aside everything that you want to because if it's only what you want to then you will hold on to something else. i will and so the circumcision people don't be like oh come and circumcise me when with the ones that raped Dana, 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 yeah, Dana. Whatever. they they was really they was really strategic on how they did it, you know. Um, they they needed a rest, and so like circumcision hurts. It's like pruning, but if if we can understand that it's it's really about okay, I'm gonna bring you over. It, there was another scripture that you read, and it's like I can't remember where it was. What it sound it, like? It's like I'm I'm gonna. I think it was in the, um, Genesis. Maybe 17. Like I'm it well, just told me it'd be perfect when he told no, you it's, that. It's, no, I'm so I'm just wrong. It's like when you get over there, I'm gonna give you a land. It's part of the problem. Yeah, he told that the Isaac. Which it, was what was that 20? So it's it's the 26. It's probably okay. about 20 when you go before you get to five and he's telling Isaac, okay. I'm gonna give you the land I promised your dad. And he's like, Well, they're gonna have to fight for it. Yes. That's that's it didn't say you're gonna to have to fight for it right away, but you're not gonna take that land right. without fighting. Right. So you, it's like somebody coming to try to take your house. Garrett, move out. We're coming in. Right. right. What? what? So the circumcision is painful, but it is it's righteous. And if we if he said choose you this day, he's gonna say. Now I'm jumping. I'm jumping. I think. Dude, you just only going to serve with yeah. the job. It's Joshua. Go ahead. Yeah. So it's it, there. There is decision, but it's like you either die, you live. You yeah. die, you live, and so we 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 need to really con consider what's what's happening. You know, it, just different. Just I don't know. Just different things and scenarios, historical. Scenarios are coming through my mind because we're covetous and we want something. That being being carnal is all about being covetous, which is probably why it's the the most important of that. Um, the we covetous and, and and we'll wanna we'll wanna do things, but if we have the mind, or he give he give us a foresight that there is no reason we should have it except that we've been born of or this. So even though I feel like this, I know it's what he told me. I didn't feel like cleaning up before my mama got home. Mm -hmm. And uh, but she told me. She didn't want to tell you if you did. My last whooping was I was 13. Because <laughs> I didn't do it. She told I I must I probably go see now to forget it. You know, but she was totally right. And when she drove us in the driveway, that's like this is not gonna be good. Not for me. Not going to be good because she told me. And when she told me, you said, you know, we tell our children what to do and with our voice, mm -hmm. and we expect them to do it. And we got the, 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 the creator of heaven and earth, mm -hmm. and, and, and we don't have fear. That's what, the, that's what the prayer teaches. The prayer teaches you that you don't need to have fear. The prayer teaches you to erase the fact that he made heaven and earth. The prayer teaches you that hell, well, hell is there, but I mean, 
So why? If the prayer teaches you, you don't have to be diligent. The prayer teaches you, you don't have to study the Bible. The prayer teaches you that you can go do any and everything like you, like you want to. The prayer teaches you that all other doctrines are just as good because if there is no penalty for you, then well, what's the point? That's what yeah. that little prayer teaches you. So we sound stupid, but people want us to sound stupid because now you got to give up something. You made a statement that I want to read, and I need to memorize the rest of this. In Titus 2 and 11, listen to this, because people say we're under grace. If we were under grace, we would live a different way. Let me show you. For the grace of God <clears throat> that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, first teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live, obligation should is our obligatory word, should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, that's two, the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, listen, who gave himself for us, and they say that we can live like we want to, that we can be under grace and under, not under law, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity, all iniquity, so that he will never say to us, Depart from me, you that work iniquity, to redeem us from all iniquity and purify to himself a peculiar people, zealous of good work. He's doing that to make us zealous of good work. You tell us there's no work for us to do. There's no work that you originate and that you disseminate and that you articulate. But that which he has originated, that which he has articulated, and that which he has disseminated, we're obligated to do it. Teach them to observe all things that I command you. We make him where he has nothing to say. He's, he's a worthless king. Yeah, what, you go out to see somebody that's going to change their gender? Somebody say, Tim, when you get there from, look up the word. Uh, he said, men in soft clothes, and that's the word is Malachus. A catamite. One that lays down uh, like a woman with a man sexually. I know what I'm talking about. He said, John the Baptist wasn't like that. And I'm proud of it. And you better believe we preached the same first sermon. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now that I got you speaking up, what you got to say, Pastor Jay? I'm enjoying it. If, if we follow the book, yes. the law, yes. the command of God, we don't have no problem. We don't have no problem. But the thing is, but you ever see the best? We base it on our feelings. We base it on our feelings. That means we come up with our own ideology of what uh, the law of God is. Now I'm getting on a beat. Yes, sir. And now, we got all this foolishness in the world. That's right. Let me show you some Torah that we follow. Somebody say, I don't believe this. I'm going to show you. Okay. Okay. Romans 13. They use it to tell you to obey the American law. Yeah. America yeah. didn't exist then. Yeah. Come on. Now. Let's look at what it says. Let every soul, who is he talking to? In the 12th chapter, he tells you to present your body as a living sacrifice. He's talking to Hebrew people that know what sacrifices are, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah, he did. So he said, let every soul be subject to the higher power, for there is no power but that of God. Because he just got through telling them, dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Wrath is a judgment. For vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. There was no chapter 13, it was just one letter. And then he said, let every soul be subject to the higher power, for there is no power but of God, and the power that be are ordained of God. Government was set up by God, man gets up, and he perverts it. But still, that doesn't mean that government is not of God. That's why he would use wicked Assyria to punish Israel. They're wicked, and you're wicked. I'll use them to punish you because so you'll come back and turn to me. Uh -huh. Yeah, he did. Then he says, whosoever resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. 
Now, when we start saying resist the power, you understand there's no power but that of God. That's why Peter and John can say we rather we obey God rather than man because we know who's over you. He said, and they that resist receive to themselves, what's my word? Damnation. For rulers are not a terror of, to good works. Rulers that are appointed by God, they are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Listen! Young people, when rulers do like God say, they are a terror to evil works. They are a terror to the thief. They are a terror to the murderer. They are a terror to wicked government. They are a terror to those that are enslaved. They should be enslaved and rapists. Nat Turner was a, ter a terror to evil people. They say Cromwell was a terror to evil persons, but they don't want to get at the Nat Turner. Look what he says. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. So that lets you know that they're only the terror to evil. When your government and your laws are terror to good people, that's a wicked government. Mm -hmm. He said, will you then be afraid of the power? Do that which is good. How do you know what good is? God's word. And you will have praise of the same. For he is a deacon. The word is diakonos, the word servant. The Greek word here is diakonos. Deacon was a servant of God to thee for good. That's how you know you got a wicked government. When the wicked rule, the people mourn. Yeah. It says, be afraid, he says, he says, but if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword. That's the same thing as what you would call electric chair, being crucified, right. being stoned. The sword was a means of putting somebody to death that had stolen somebody, that had raped the damsel, that had caught with somebody, blaspheme the mother, father. Yeah, it is. It says, he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is a minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. This New Testament. Right. Wherefore, you must needs be subject not only for wrath, but for conscience sake. And for this cause, you pay tribute. In other words, you support that. This is what he said. Y'all use that for taxes, but you delete that he's supposed to be doing God's will, opposing God just in the land. Why? Because you've got a chance to bring us over here in sheep like ship like sardines, whip us, beat us, make us work your land, and you gave this to us, but you weren't subject to God. You are a goddamn lie and a hypocrite and a fraud, and that's why I don't like your Christianity. That's why I love the Bible, because it condemns you when I read it. All day long. All right. He says he's continuing to God upon this very thing. Now I want you to understand this. Render therefore to all their due. If I put you under them, it's for your punishment. Render, render, that, render their due. Tribute upon tribute. Custom upon custom. That's why I can say Mr. President. That's why I can say Mr. Vice President. That's why I can say Mr. Prime Minister. We wouldn't be under him, them if we had done right. We were supposed to conquer the land. But now let's get to this. Fear upon fear, honor upon honor. Now let's go to what the Bible says. You say we're not under the law, but we're under grace? Tell why you're teaching this. Let's look at what he says. Oh, no man, nothing. Be obligated to any man for anything, but to love one another. Love, love does not seek its own. It rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Oh, no man, nothing but to love one another. He that loveth another has fulfilled. Wait a minute, I thought there was no law. He that loveth has fulfilled the law. In other words, you don't let your brother sin and not rebuke him. You hate him in your heart, according to Leviticus. Not only that, you owe people the truth. Look at me. You owe people the truth. I don't care who it is, whether it's me, whether it's you, whether it's your daddy, whether it's your mama, your, you owe them the truth. Don't let them walk around thinking they're righteous when they're not. Don't let them walk around thinking you like what they do to you when you don't. Don't let them walk around lying on people and you can stop. You, if you love them, owe them the truth. For he that loveth hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, I, I thought you said we don't have law anymore. 
He says, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This is what the Bible says. And you tell me there's no more Torah? This is the heart of Torah. And it says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Do you all remember the song? Love. Love will keep us together. Sometimes some of the words of a song can fit in what we teach you. It's fulfilling. That's right. It's the fulfilling of the law, you all. So I just came out of my mind when Pastor Gray was talking. Here it is, what you would call the Ten Commandments. Hey, you didn't read all ten. He said the other commandment is fulfilled in this covenant. You think you're going to have another God before him and you don't covet his authority and his position? You think you're going to take his name in vain? You don't think you're covering his, the authority of his name for somebody to believe you because you took his name? You think that you, when you make a goal and uh, whatever kind of image it is, you mm -hmm. haven't coveted him, that you want to get some power anyway and his authority to tell you no, so you covet that authority and you make you an idol. You think when he tell you to keep it south, to keep it holy, you think that what you have done, you don't understand that you have taken right. the authority to tell you when and how to worship. You don't think that that's coveting. The writer knew what he was talking about. Yeah, dog, sometimes he's about ready. <clears throat> what you got to say now, Pastor Gray? Don't you know how to jump your dog? <laughs> no, I might start trying to wrestle and I've got no. What did he say? He told me don't be a junk, don't say I'm a junkyard dog. <laughs> there was a wrestler called a junkyard yeah. dog one time. Somebody say something. Don't make me start on something else because I'm full up today. I ain't heard no word come from Patrick Lip. Nope. He said he listening. Uh, she does. Andrea, they, they, Andrea, they, they, they want they want to hear that you've been stirred up to, to do good and not evil. <laughs> Am I going to play the violin till she get up here? <laughs> she might have. She might have had to do something. No, I guess I don't get to tell her what to do. Uh, she you might. know, um, the Old Testament tell us to walk circumspect. It does. And if we don't pay attention to what's going on around us, just as in the days of the Israelites, the nations were a snare. Yes. Their gods were a snare and they were a thorn in their flesh. Mm -hmm. And we're not paying attention to what we've been given because if we were circumspect and we would walk circumspect, we can look around us and see every other nation that's in this nation is actually a nation except us. Mm. You have the Chinese, you have, we, they have their own communities. You have the Japanese, you have the Koreans, they have their own sections of town. You have the Mexicans, they have their own sections of town because they have their own nation. You even have the Europeans and this is not their nation. Mm -hmm. But they have another government and they have a whole nother nation that backs them up. Yep. Pay attention, we are not a people. Keep talking. Go and the reason that we're not a people, because because like every other, all the nations that I named before, they actually have a law. They have, they actually have statutes and commandments. And they told us that, well, we're going to give you one and we're going to call it the Constitution. We're going to call it the Bill of Rights. And but when we set it up, it was not for you because guess what? You're not a people. Come on, you're true. 
Now what we say, now what you just preaches and says, you are a people. Yes. You're just lost. You have lost your God. Hmm. You have lost your statutes. You have, you've lost your culture. You've lost everything and you're not a people. This is how they can tell us that we are Negroes. We could be Igbos to begin with. Then we can start off and they're going to tell us again that we're Negroes. And then they're going to call us something else. We're, we're Black. And then we're going to say we're African Americans. Who can change anybody's status like that? Oh, they actually have a nation. Oh, Trump says some people were a nation that just oh, yeah. his mouth did me. Oh, yeah. Yes. And, that, and that, that, that doesn't make them a nation. That's a good point, Andrina. We in bad. Well, what I'm saying is that the very thing that made us a nation from the beginning is the same thing that makes us a nation now. And it's Torah. It is this book they stole from us. Yes. And they decided to teach us what they wanted to teach us out of it through their translations. Yes. That's and through their seminaries and through their church structure that, you know what? I'm gonna teach you how to forgive me cause I'm gonna rape you oh. and I'm gonna murder you. I'm gonna burn you. I'm gonna lynch you. And I'm gonna say, I'm still a Christian. I'm still saved. Oh, and I'm going to hell. <laughs> and they taught us that. It yeah. wasn't for our benefit, it was for theirs. Yes. But if we had continued to follow the law, mm. then we would have been able to execute the judgment that the Most High commanded. And we see that with Nat Turner. We saw it with Joshua. We saw it through the judges. But you mentioned something and I think what I think Psalm 147 verses 19 and 20 will bear it out. This wasn't given to anybody but us. The laws, statutes, and commandments. And we don't know, we don't understand how huge that is. That the one who made the earth taught us how to govern in the earth. Mm. And to be a proxy for him and to do and to and to do his bidding in the earth that it can be what was in his heart and in his mind. He gave that. And I think I'm right, Psalm 147, verses 19 and 20. I wrote it down wrong, Lord. I don't even want to tell you what I wrote. You probably can but, see. But this is why we're lost. Because we're in a system that, that it was never set up for us. They kind of wrote us in. I'm going to write you in at the end and, and say, okay, I'll write you in. I'll give you an amendment. You know, I'll, I'll write you in somewhere. But it's like you said, if, if they gave us two or three states and say, you all go live there. Are we going to still use this constitution that was never set up for us? We would. Because I asked preachers, I asked preachers, I asked deacons, I asked most people. Sometimes I ask this way. So... If, I, if God was just gonna, gonna drop a little drop of acid on your foot, on your body, every time there's a judgment, it has to be made. First of all, if you're gonna have a government with no penalties, acid dropped. Somebody steals something and they say, lock them up. He never said lock somebody up for stealing. Always restitution. What about somebody raped somebody? Well, you know, it's her fault. She was dressed provocatively. No, death. The Bible said when you rape somebody, it's the same thing that you kill somebody that they cried out and nobody came to help. That's what it said. But if you say, I'm going to lock them up, acid. If we knew that God was going to drop acid on us, a drop of acid, 
every time we got judgment wrong and then it drops them on your children. And then after one side get messed up, we're going to make the other side get well again. We be careful in our judgment. If, if every time we slander somebody, spoke wrong against somebody, did, if he decided, I'm going to just put one burn, one burn mark on your face till your whole face look burned. We be more careful in our judgment. Well, Pastor, if we don't, if we don't understand what real judgment is, and if we're still going by customs and traditions, and it's, there's a parallel there that you brought out when you talked about uh, Messiah saying to the Pharisees that you want to uphold your traditions and you make null and void the commandments of the Most High, of the Creator. And we do that here. There's a parallel there that we have a lot of customs and traditions that we keep and we're not even seeing that we're disannulling his. We're saying yours is not valid, this is valid. If I say do whatever I say and go and teach what I taught, he never taught Christmas, he never taught Easter, he never taught sunrise service. at least those things that pertain to what we call religious service or honoring and worshiping the creator. But yet we are steeped in those things. And we don't see the parallel there. Somehow we miss it. And it's because we've been taught to miss it. We will never be, the, the reason why Daniel and Azariah and Mishael and Hananiah were prominent in Babylon in the days of their captivity is because they kept the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. And they would never go with tradition. I don't care what kind of statue you set up. I don't care what kind of horn you play, sack, butt, the psalter. I don't care what you do. I'm not going to dishonor my God, but I know I'm valuable to you. Yes. Because you surely don't, I'm the one that's not going to steal from you. That comes from my God. Yes. I'm the one that's not going to bear false witness. I'm the one that's not going to commit adultery with your women around here. Thank the Lord. This is how they became prominent. This is how Daniel went through so many administrations because he kept, he had a law he kept and it wasn't Babylonian. Mm -hmm. he, he said, I ain't doing Babylonian law to death. Y'all can kill me, kill me. Yeah. And so did his three brothers. With the God, we'd have that type of strength to know that we have a law that has absolutely zero to do with the laws of this land. That makes us a people. Yes. A people, a special people, a peculiar people, a people of the most high God. I praise him for that. <laughs> I praise him. Because even though people on the reservation, they got their own law. They got their own law. Their own government. Right. And they say they are sovereign people. When are we going to be sovereign? Under the most high. We got so many jack legs telling us, <laughs> oh, damn, we ain't having the law. Ooh, I be messed up, boy. Ooh, ooh. I'm glad Jesus came. I don't see the scripture I asked for up on the screen. Can you put it up? I, I, I had it up there. You, you, you probably, it doesn't matter. It ain't, it's not there now. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Do you want the woman, Hannah and I, Michelle, as a right or the one about the. I wanted the Psalm 147, verse 19 and 20. It's there, right there for your reading. See it on the left? 
He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye Yah. And that's hallelujah. This, this is what made them a nation. All those things you read to us in Deuteronomy 4, 29 and 30, they were becoming a nation. We, why, did, why are we losing that? Why are we deciding that, that we don't want that? It's because we've been taught to amalgamate. But re remember that he came down, the word became flesh. What word you talking about? The New Testament was written. That's right. Torah came down in flesh. That's prettier than I said. And he dwelt among us, and he didn't just come down in any kind of flesh. Green, yellow, purple. He came down in a flesh of a Hebrew yes. from the line of Abraham. He did. And you, we better never forget it. He didn't come down multicolored. Because he came to redeem a certain people. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to let that rest right there. And I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to let somebody else talk. I think it's time to rest. I think it's time to speak some more. I believe in that. We, we've gotten lost in the sauce. Mm. This time and we've it. forgotten our true purpose. Yeah. And we've forgotten that we've been redeemed. We have been redeemed. And the evidence is here. It's plain to see. Not so many years ago, not even a hundred years ago, they was lynching us and burning us, raping us. Yes, baby. You you can't see, and we we all, we're gonna let them give the narrative and let them say, well, we would we decided to be nice to you and let you go. No. That's like the Egyptians saying, Well, we you know, we just decided to let you go. No, you didn't decide to let us go. He made you let us go. Yes. You don't get credit for that. You don't get to create the narrative and say, well, you know, well, we did have abolitionists and we get out of here with that. <laughs> the most high God delivered us. He delivered us. And that's still some delivering it to be done. Yes. Because salvation is not a one-time thing. No. You are saved, you being saved, and you will be saved. Two lambs every day, two lambs every evening, and you better know it. And then on top of that, if you mess up another one or something else, and then every three times a year, we're going to go and rejoice. There are some cultural things, but as far as being in covenant, it's only the, the blood of the bulls and the rams that was lacking. Yeah. But the blood of our Mashiach, our Messiah? Yeah. That's the better covenant. Yes. Because there's a difference. You just, you, they just kept killing more sheep and more oxen. And I'm going to just keep killing because I'm going to keep staying in my sin. He said, there's a sore punishment if you trample this blood. Yes. And I tell that, they keep, I plead the blood. For real? You be there's a sore punishment if you go on sinning yes. after this, after this power. It's not just his death, it's his resurrection, it's his ascension and the power he gave, the gifts. And the gift is to live according to his will. 
and to do his government and his justice in the earth. I don't know why we ain't tired of this. They locked us down for, and we still can be locked down at any moment. Ain't y'all yes. tired of this? Yes. Hey, you gonna create and take our tax money and go somewhere else and say you fighting it and send money so and so place. You and you've done wrong here that you won't correct. Yes. He said, billions and trillions of dollars over there. And we ain't, we still ain't filled up where y'all took in our land. And you still been over there in the Ukraine, you and your son both Come making on. money and getting people fired. Yeah, everybody got money. I'm going to tell you something. When Andrina said earlier that this country is not made for us, these laws were not made for us. The most I let me, I had forgotten what it was, but in his power and in his might, he let me find it. Andrina, can you see my screen where it says uh, the March 4th, 1790 HR yes. Naturalization Bill? Yes. Okay, look at, listen to what it says. <clears throat> Be it enacted by the state, no, be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that any alien other than an alien enemy being a free white person who shall have resided within the limits under the jurisdiction of the United States for the term of two years may be admitted to become a citizen thereof on application to any common law court of record in one of the states wherein he shall have resided for the term of one year and at least. Because it's, it's written in English, so the F is the S, et cetera. I'm just, I'm reading a copy of the original document. So when we say these laws weren't written for us, and she said they come back and add, try to say they add you in, no. It says, being a free white, it looks like it's a person, but it's really person, okay? We need to learn these things and teach our children. And they, Nobody, go ahead. And they still abide by that same law. You better believe it. Now, but even though you don't hear hiding, they, they go by that same law. You better believe it. That's why you can be locked up. That's why you can be shot. That's why they can hunt you down like a car, hit you, I mean, like a dog and hit you with a car. And we don't even bring the people up to court until enough people say something and they and, and they do something. But you still, if you don't pay attention, you don't know what happened to those people. That's right. They can be whisked away under something else and have another identity. Tim, I told you that I watched a documentary a while back about the people of Papua New Guinea. Mm -hmm. And they still did law like biblical law. And they would have judges and they would stand there and the people would stand in line and they would wait. And they opened a book and there were statutes and judgment they would judge out of. But see, they had, the I think the um, British government had what they call primary rule, but they still would come to their elders and people that they had appointed. And if they if there was an issue with a husband and wife, they come there. If they had an issue with property rights and stuff there, they'd stand there and they would wait. And I believe these are our brothers and sisters. I believe it. I do too. And they and they knew they understood something. They are a nation within a nation. Even though these people are ruling over us, they don't have rule in us. Well, we and can... they stood by and they waited and they did judgment and it was a beautiful thing to see. See, this, this is maturity. We ain't ready to rule. We still want to be children, like what they call a nanny state. Come on. And they've done everything they could to keep our pituitary gland from letting us grow up. They've done everything by keeping tight shoes on your feet so your feet won't get beat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
in the world of dealing with insects and when you deal with pesticides, they have something called an IGR. It's called an insect growth regulator. What an insect growth regulator is, it's called a chitin inhibitor. We got chitin and I have insects have chitin. And so if you inhibit the chitin, the, the bug that usually go through a mort metamorphosis, it doesn't get to shed that skin. And so it don't get the molt. So since it doesn't molt, it stays a child. It can never get its genitalia uh, to the place where they can reproduce. So what they do is you stop them from reproducing by using the insect growth regulator. They use stuff like that on mosquitoes to stop mosquitoes from being able to make the naiades grow into a mosquito. They use stuff like that on roaches to keep them from growing from a nymph to becoming a full roach. Right. Uh, so what happens is you can be taught an uh, insect growth regulator in your mind. You, you, you don't do what's necessary to grow up. You don't learn to make judgments. All you want to do is sing. All you want to do is dance. What you want to do is you want to come to a building and feel safe, but you don't want to do the work of the Most High God. And see, that's why we respect you more than we respect most people. We see you go do the work. We see you do the work. And many churches already have their laws and statutes and their commandments already set up. So when you join an organization, they can tell you where we expect your dress to be so long or your sleeve to go past your elbow. And we expect you not to wear a necklace if you're a man or a beard. And these are, the, I'm telling you, there is a parallel. The bylaws. That's right. This the, the way the Pharisees ruled. And this is there's a parallel that we've been given. And in order to join this organization, you have to raise your hand in the O yeah. that you're going to abide by these things. Yes. And they're going to And it's like, well, and they'll tell you to put your hand on the Bible and swear you're going to do things against the Bible. <laughs> yes. How evil is that? Is that not a curse? It is. It's just like joining the sorority and fraternity of the lodge or any of that stuff. I don't even, I had pledged allegiance to the flag in so many years, it ain't even funny. I pledged allegiance to my God over the United States of America. Mm. Yes. And if somebody asked me, what did you, I will tell you. I'm not going to pledge allegiance to Biden, Trump, no. Bush. Once I learned that the government or, it, or the, the businesses that keep these people in office, I'm not doing anything to destroy the country in so far as terrorism, but what I will do is promote righteousness. And if that breaks a hold on this country and causes it to fall the most I got out, that's what I'm about. But as long as I'm under subjugation, I'm under subjugation. But I'm telling you something, there come a time when the Most High God is going to say, you know what? Rise up, my people, and it won't be the Falcons. And when we're going to be like Daniel, when Nebuchadnezzar say, anybody, well, Daniel, it was Shadrach, what he called Shadrach, Meshach, and the bed to go, mm -hmm. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Anybody say anything against their God, mm -hmm. you will be put down. When we going to have that kind of strength in this earth? where we are, when on we, this planet, when anywhere. We, when we mean it and we understand that God's word, we need to be like Abraham. What does God's voice say? Why am I joining Antifa? Why am I joining Black Lives Matter? Why am I getting to listen to all these psychologists that start with Freud and start with Abraham Maslow and go with these and you say everybody needs counsel. Know what you're doing is you're going to get so many black people that's been under counseling and you're going to have a mental record and now you're going to say that they got all these things going on and now you're going to be able to label them, do stuff to them, and anytime you want to give them some kind of medicine, but you don't want them to have God's word and these psychologists, they become the priest. They're going to be able to tell you, no, you're not a sinner. You're just alcoholic. You're not a drunk. No, you have a sexual addiction. You're not a whoremonger. No, you just don't want to work. No, it's not just the fact that you're tired. No, you're mean as hell. You're not what they call bipolar. We're going to say one thing, and God has said that the heart of men is desperately weak. Right. We got all these competing ideologies and philosophies and religions. Say, Tim, you don't believe that there's mental health. I don't believe what you tell me about all this mental health. 
Where was it all these other years? It's a setup. It's a setup. Every time, every time I go TV to the black community, to this. It's a setup. What do you see a member? There could be brain problems, but you want to act like there's no sin and wickedness in the world. You want to act like, and, and then you get these preachers that what happened is the psychologists were getting all the money, selling Jesse Raphael, oh. Jenny Jones, Montel Williams, Dr. Phil, and you promote it on TV. Now you got people go to school for 10 minutes, and now we know what your problem is, but you're still living in hell in your home, and oh. you did not the most high God, and you're going to make, we didn't love God like we the educated, outdated, don't have any culture, and make sure that we're a cult. Well, you're a cult too. You're a cult of scientism. How about you have studied the mind? You can't study the mind, it's an abstraction. You can study the brain. Don't play. Can you hear me? I, yeah, I heard you say, can you hear me? <laughs> okay. That, that, that whole psychology thing is a setup in them selling therapy. And the reason is because Reparations is a real issue, okay? Yes. And and it's not because, you know, they decided to acknowledge it. It's because we're not stopping. And you start understanding that if you want to have some semblance of unity in what you call the United States, you better pay attention to the people who are descendants of the people that built it. And so most of the, and, and you want to sell that we're not competent. It's being sold to us, therapy and all these things are being sold to us because they want to declare us to be incompetent to receive reparations. That they're still going to have to monitor us and like you say, be a nanny state and to, to have this authority over us. What if we do give you this money? You know, your mind not right. We don't know, you all are, you all have suffered from mental illness. Are you really, you, are you really who you say you are? Are you not from Barbados or, or from, uh, from Jamaica or something? Maybe we don't owe you, maybe you just made this up in your mind. They're selling this for a reason because they want to label black people as incompetent. Incompetent to rule over themselves. Because if we give you enough money, you know we y'all not gonna come around and y'all gonna go by be by yourself and you're gonna do your own thing. And, and we can't have that. We can't have it. So this is why this is being sold to us that go, you go and talk. To, if you have a problem with your mom, go talk to your mom. If you have a problem with your dad, go talk to your dad. Do it the way the Most High said. If you got an alt, take two or three with you, one or two with you and, 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 and talk to this person. If we just do it the way he says do it. But you're going to tell somebody that's going to record this and it's the same thing that they do in the Church of Scientology and they have dossiers on people. Can y'all still hear me? Yes. Mm -hmm. They get dossiers on people and you go and they tell you touch these two things and we'll realize when you clear and you're not telling any more lies to us and you touch these two uh, rods or these probes and you touch them and you tell us everything that's going on in you and it's like a lie detector uh -huh. and they're going to get all of your all of your secrets and they got them recorded so when you decide i never want to be in this again you all manipulated me you made me do things that i shouldn't have done you've taken my money and you say well i got all your secrets do you understand that this is how the world works? It works through secrets. This is why he said nothing that's secret. It, 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 it's always going to be revealed. It's going to be uncovered. This is why he tell us to confess our faults. So nobody could come back and say, yeah, I know a secret about you. And if you give me $10,000, 
or if you do this heinous deed, I won't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing that I won't pull up on the board that I just think is imperative. Can you see my board right here? I want, I want to go to PSA 1. Patrick, like what? Uh, I can use an abbreviation. No, that's awesome. Okay, so check this out. Can you see it? Yes. Okay. Yes. When I when I do this and I go to PSA one, Psalm one, there one of the amazing things about that is I want you to see the Bible said, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel, the counsel of the ungodly. Why are we getting all our counsel from people that care not for the most high God, don't want to hear anything about the most high God? He says, you're blessed when you don't walk in their counsel, nor be in their way or stand in their way or sit in their seat. But his delight is in the Torah of Yahweh. And in his law or Torah does he meditate day and night. You're going to be competent to handle your problems. You're going to be competent to be able to be delivered. And you'll be stable like a tree planted by the rivers of water, etc. But the ungodly, we let too many people have too much to say in our lives. That's all. I just wanted to bring that up because they got their agenda. If we can control your entertainment, if we can control what you see on TV, the movies, and YouTube, and then so far as if it's something good, that will expose something that they do. We'll censor that. If we can control your mind on what you think and what you learn in school, we can control what you think about your sexuality. We can control what you think about family. You're going to always be under our counsel, and it's not for your benefit. That's what I. That's what I want to say. Why would we give up God's Torah? No, and, and they tell they talk about climate change and all these things, and climate change is not about the weather. Climate is culture. Climate is a cultural change, and they know that the Most High is doing something in the earth right now that they can't stop, and they're gonna host conferences. And they're going to come together, have committees because they understand that he's here and he's moving in the hearts of his people. And we're saying it's enough. It's enough. If we look biblically and we learn and we discern from what we've seen through the Old Testament and how nations rise up and how they fall. Why would we think this one is going to last forever? It's stupid. The wicked are going to be turning to hell and all of the nations that forget Yahweh God. And we need to be preparing ourselves for his coming. We need to be preparing ourselves to rule. And I may not need to be saying this on, on the air, but I'm going to say it because I'm, I'm saying in his spirit. It has to be done. We have to be ready. Because we're not being kingdom minded if we're not preparing ourselves now. What By what rule are we going to rule? He said we're going to rule and reign with him. By what laws, statutes, and commandments? Is it just what I think? It's just what I've been feeling all this time? It's just because I said I was saved and I, I said the sinner's prayer? Everybody else got a way they rule. Look at the wicked and what they do. There's no division with them. Oh, well, I might not want you to be ahead, but yeah, I recognize that you got more, you got more guns than I do. And you have more nuclear weapons than I do. So I might will submit a little bit to you. And I will let you go ahead and let your dollar be the the the, the currency you know, for the nations to trade by. I may let you do that. And, but until I get to the place where it's like, ah, that's not no longer profitable, but I'm going to do it. They submit to one another. 
and they still rule as the same group of people when you call them Republicans or Democrats. Yeah, they the same people. Make sure that we are the power and not you. And we still make sure that we still love Europe, Great Britain. And we're going to show you all the king and the queen and the princes. And these are the very people. And that's all propaganda. It's all propaganda. Yep. Every form of media that you see, television, if you hear radio, if you on the internet, all of these are form of propaganda to make you believe that you're not stronger and you're not wiser. And you're not, you don't have as much strategy as these people. It's all a performance. And because we care about what's on TV today, am I going to the club tonight? My wife ran out of the house and I don't know where she's going. We got in an argument about something stupid. This is this is our, these are our distractions. Because we don't even know how to rule our own households. Because we've been ruling it by love and hip hop, scandal, every television show they put on but not by the word that was given to us and only us to be a nation. I have watched videos. After I say this, I'm going to stop talking. Let somebody else talk. I have watched videos of people in what they call Great Britain, but I call it not so Great Britain. And in London, England, or whatever you want to say. Okay, so they have something called Speaker's Corner. And the Speaker's Corner is a place where they have decided to make a space where everybody could come and have freedom of speech. So, it's, and it's mostly religion. It's, there's some politics there, but it's mostly religion. So you have Muslims, you have Christians, you have Hebrews, you have people from the comedic community. And I say what they, the comedic community, I mean, who believe in Egyptology and things like that. Y'all, I'm gonna tell y'all, I have watched this stuff. And I'm telling you, the Hebrews prevail. They can't touch the Hebrews. They can't touch them. Because the Hebrews come and they bring their books. I'm going to bring you the books. I'm talking about, we talking about people from the, the Ish community. What they call the, the Oscar Nazians. They come there, put the chain. These are things that we don't see happening in earth, but he's doing everywhere. And and this this one particular guy could be there for hours and hours until it gets dark. And he's there, and he's like, just tell me what you what your objection is, and I'll answer it. That was time. Yes. But he's he looked, he's, he's us. But he's over across the waters doing the same thing that some of us are doing here. We don't, if we don't see that the most high is moving and he's bringing us back to him. It's not about believing and having faith, it's about knowing. It's about it being written on our hearts. It's Torah written in our hearts that we should do it. Do it. What is there for, for us to If do? we don't see this, we will be lost. We'll be caught up in tradition. Things that were given to us Things that were taken away from us.
We better pray and ask. We better pray and ask before we condemn and set aside. We better pray and ask him. Lord, am I, I, am I doing according to your will? And uh, 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 Is this something I just learned? It's hard to unlearn stuff. It's so hard. It's so hard. Because for the longest time when I would read the New Testament, they say, you know, you should read the New Testament. You know, you just go in the church and just start, you know, just start at Matthew and just read. And it's like, okay, but I skipped a whole lot of pages to get to Matthew. <laughs> like, I feel funny because I'd never read any other book like this. But I'm listening because I think, and I've been told that there are people who are in the church and they know better than you. So I'm reading and I don't have a clue who these people are, these genealogies. And then I was just like, okay, I'm gonna keep reading. I'm gonna keep reading. And I'm saying, and they've been telling me about this Jesus person. But when I'm reading what he's saying, he's not the person you've been telling me he is. And when I read about him, he, he, I can't see that dude with the long hair and stuff and looking soft and and I, I can't see him saying the things that he said. This has to be wrong. First of all, you didn't tell me he would talk hard to people like this. And I love it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Do you see some of these saints that I just pulled up? Yes. You don't really get to see these people. These are black. I just couldn't, that, that face, I couldn't put with the words. The face that they had given, that, that this is this white guy with the blue eyes and the blonde hair. I couldn't put that with the words. The words, I couldn't see those words coming out of this person's mouth. And I was like, this has to be a lie. Because first of all, the people that told me, well, he's just about love. And I'm like, I'm listening to him. And he's telling me, you, you better fear the one who can kill you and cast you into hell. Oh, oh, oh. When they came to him and they said, he talked about the Pharisees. He, it, it, and they say, do you know he, they were offended? He was like, I don't care. I don't care about them being offended. Every tree that my heavenly father hasn't planted, it's going to be plucked up. Leave them alone. I was like, this is not the, this is not the Jesus I be hearing in church. Why are they doing this to me? I, I don't. Y'all giving me this partial kind of thing, and this this is not the whole person. And then I realized you got a Sunday school book that you teach a lot of, and and most of the sermons come from arise out of whatever you studied in Sunday school. Yeah, yeah, true. Away from people. Uh, Okay, I'm through. I'm I'm done talking. I'm well, sorry, y'all. Okay. Did you hear what Gary said to you? I did not. Gary, she she, I'm, she didn't hear what you said to her with your power. She didn't hear what you said. No. <laughs> well, I appreciate you joining me, Andrina. You did seem like you got the feeling better, and that made me happy. May the Most High bless us all and guard us, keep us, empower us to do his will, whatever it is in the earth, and that we will be offended when people want to mitigate, mock his holy and righteous word who was revealed in the face of his son 
whose glory is brighter than the face of Moses. Yet at the same time, the very same essence of the righteousness of the holiness of God is revealed the same way because the words that Moses had came from him anyway. May he help us. May he make us the nation he wants us to be. May he cause us to be the soldiers that he wants us to be. May he lift us up and give us that inheritance that is guaranteed to them that are sanctified in him. Amen and amen and even so. Amen. Hallelujah. I forgot. I had just I forgot. Bye, y'all. Love y'all. Goodbye, Andrina. I love you. I plan to come home to you later on. <laughs>